name is Edward. Uh, I want to say thank you very much for coming here. It's an honor for me to share the information that I have prepared. And uh, yes, yeah, since it's the second day of the Crypto Expo, I understand how tired you are. But I really want to say thanks a lot for coming here. I'll do my best in the next 20 minutes to uh, introduce you with a concept of a crypto processing. I'll explain how it works, how it is constructed, how it can help your business. I'll use B2B and Pay as an example. So without further ado, let's dive into crypto processing 2023. First of all, I want to start with some numbers. According to CZ, the sale of finance, right now we have like 5% uh, of people in the world adopted cryptocurrency. So we can say that it's still the, the infancy phase, but if we look at the numbers, okay, we can conclude that it's, al it's already like 300 million people have cryptocurrency and uh, are able to make direct payments without intermediaries, with lower fees to your business, right, for your services and products. So yeah, and, uh, and uh, crypto processing companies play a huge role in facilitating these transactions. So how it works from the end user perspective? Let's check this out. So imagine I'm an end user and I go to an online shop and I want to buy a laptop, for example, it costs 2,000 euro. So now I go and I choose the payment option to pay with cryptocurrency, right? I click the, uh, I click the button pay with crypto and then I will see the list of cryptocurrencies available for the payment method and then I choose the particular cryptocurrency, for example, I choose the Bitcoin, I can see the rates and um, if I send the crypto and I see the unique address, right? So when I send the crypto to this unique address, um, I will need to wait some time and then I will see the successful, uh, successful uh, status of my transaction. So now let's see how it works on the side of the business. So on the side of the business, I can say that the business uh, has a API connection to the crypto processing and uh, uh, sorry guys, so it, uh, give me like a minute to concentrate. So the business actually has a connection to the uh, crypto processing solution and uh, so yeah, the business gets an API connection and it can integrate the crypto processing solution and uh, let's, let me, uh, when the business gets crypto, it has two options. The, either for, the first of all is that the business can get uh, converted cryptocurrency and uh, the second option is that the business can receive the cryptocurrency without conversion. So the, all right, so let's, let's sorry, sorry for my, no, I'm very nervous. So. Okay, let's still focus on the first option. So the first option is that I receive cryptocurrency and it is automatically converted into fiat or into stable coins or like into Bitcoin. And in this case, I don't need to, uh, I don't have a risk of crypto volatility, right? And it is a perfect, it is a perfect solution for e-commerce or for fintech. And uh, in this case, uh, yeah, I don't have to worry about the uh, volatility of cryptocurrency. The second option implies that there is no conversion. So whatever the user sent me, I receive it in the same cryptocurrency. And this uh, method uh, like suits better for companies like exchanges or digital process uh, provider, digital assets providers. The business model does not require for them to convert cryptocurrency into one uh, into one asset, into fiat or into uh, stable coins. So this is how it works for them. Let's uh, look how it works behind the scenes. Actually, how it is constructed on the crypto processing side. So first of all, I want to say that uh, on our side we have blockchain infrastructure. We have full blockchain nodes. We have uh, access like to 14 different blockchain nodes and for example when we 
generate unique addresses. Like when the crypto come, we download the new blocks of transactions, we parse these blocks of transactions, and now we need to move this information to, uh, to the back office. So in the back office, we need, we need to extract this data, we need to assign this information to the client, and uh, we provide this information to the public API. So, and the idea is that we have a multiple of external, multiple external connections. So, for example, we have a connection with the exchanges, we have connections with the rate providers, we have connections with IML providers, with the application tools, etc., etc. So, we can conclude that uh, the overall system consists of the following. It's a blockchain infrastructure, it's a back office where our employees have access, it's a user panel where the user panel has access, it's the API which allows to automate all the transaction flow, and uh, it's, a, it's a number of multiple external connections like exchanges, verification tools, and uh, IML providers, security tools, etc., etc. So here, guys, I want to uh, emphasize your attention on the on the statistics. So we took. January, like we took uh, the 100,000 transactions in January, and we can see that the vast majority, like the vast majority of people, they prefer to pay in stable coins, like in USDT. Then it goes like uh, other coins, but the vast majority of people prefer to pay in uh, USDT. So you might think, okay. Like, I don't need to have any crypto processors, I can set up the infrastructure to accept USDT only. It makes sense because there is no, because there is no conversion, you don't need to worry about hedging, you don't need to worry about the rates, you can just do the infrastructure on your side and uh, you know, don't worry about anything. The, the thing is guys, that I don't still recommend you to do it on your own because you will definitely face some challenges and uh, I want to go through one by one the challenges that you're going to face. Okay, so the first challenge is address management. It's clear that when you want to issue an invoice for every particular user, you need to create a, a unique address. You don't use one address and give it to all your clients because in this case you will not understand um, who make a payment to you. Right, so in the end, you need to create unique address for every user. So the first challenge is how you do the address management on your site, how you facilitate the address management on your site, how you keep it, how you monitor it, etc., etc. Without a solution, uh, you have access to the dashboard where you can see all the addresses listed one by one. You see like these addresses belong to which particular user, and this is how you can like easy understand which user makes payment on the address that you provide. Okay, let's go to challenge number two. Imagine that on your side, you say, okay, I can manage this address management, so what are the next challenge that you're gonna face? The next challenge is um, token collection. As you know, like USDT, when we talk about USDT, it's a token that is based on several, on different blockchains. So imagine now, you have generated unique address, for every one of your user. And now you receive like 100 payments from different clients. So all your payments will be split between different addresses. So and now the idea is how you gonna uh, collect all, this, uh, all these deposits on the one address. And it is very difficult if you gonna do it on your side, on your side because when you do the collecting, you need to pay blockchain fee in the main parent uh, coin, like uh, Ethereum, or Binance Smart Chain, like or BNP, or Tron, and uh, yeah, it might be like really a lot of task for you, a lot of time, and it's a lot of manual work. So how we solve this issue on our side? Every address, every address that we, can, we generate is uh, created by a smart contract, and it works as a vacuum cleaner. So you, speak, you give a uh, unique address to your clients, and then when uh, the crypto come to this unique address, it will be automatically, automatically transferred to the main address. It will be automatically transferred to the main address, 
as long as it's more than minimum, minimum uh, limit, because some guys can send you like dust, and uh, it's not make sense to collect it to the main address, because in this case, you're gonna pay for dust more than you received on your unique address. So this is how we solve it on our side. And after this, let's go to the challenge number three. So the challenge number three is, is give ID for transactions. So let's, let's uh, talk about the following. Uh, you manage the first challenge, you manage the second challenge. Now you are ready to generate unique addresses for your clients and you do the successful collection of tokens on your main address. What happened next? Now imagine that one of your users send, uh, make a deposit and this deposit comes from a dark net, dark net source. And you don't know this because uh, uh, because like some random guy, like from some different, like from some random address, send on your ad, like on your deposit address like uh, cryptocurrency. You can't, you you don't know that it's, it's come from darkness source. But the companies like Crystal Chain Analysis Elliptic, they do know this. And now, if you do the successful like, uh, if you do the successful collecting on your main address, your main address risk score will be increased. And now you have a likelihood that if you withdraw the cryptocurrency on some centralized exchange, you might be like, you, there is a likelihood that all the currency will be blocked on the exchanges because every centralized exchange, every regulated centralized exchange uh, has uh, IML provider, QIT providers integrated and they effectively like uh, check every incoming transaction. So you, it, is, it is now mandatory to uh, to integrate EYT providers in order to avoid such situation when the exchange or some other third party can block your transact, like can block your uh, the, the deposit that you do for them. I want to talk about the second, like the second uh, challenge. This is a security. Well, this is pretty obvious because you need always to remember who has access to your wallet, who can make uh, payouts and uh, how do you protect against uh, DDoS attack, how you protect against social hacking, etc., etc. So with our solution, yeah, you can uh, receive uh, the, you can you have uh, different tools at your disposal. You have 2FA, you have IP whitelist, you have IP whitelist for API, and you have uh, the, uh, different user roles. So yeah, let's go to the next challenge. Well, the next challenge is user mistakes. Sometimes uh, the users, they make mistakes as well. And uh, the most uh, popular one, it's when the client receives unique address, for example, in Ethereum blockchain, like in ERC20, but accidentally sent USDT based on Binance Smart Chain. And uh, in a, a standard situation, like the user might lose such a deposit and uh, because yeah, Binance Smart Chain is a different network, right? So and, uh, if you receive the address and you expect to receive the crypto in the, uh, in the ERC20, then uh, like if, if a guy sent you like in Binance Smart Chain, then you might lose the, the cryptocurrency, right? And the user will be upset. Uh, but on our side, how we, how we solve this issue is that we uh, generate, when we generate unique address in ERC20, Secretly, under the hood, we generate the same, we duplicate the same address and assign it to the same client in Binance Smart Chain. So, in case a client, a user, like, makes a mistake and send, uh, and send instead of ERC20, send Binance Smart Chain or vice versa, we still got him covered. The crypto still come and we still can inform our client that everything is okay, no worry. So, the crypto is not lost in this case. Of course, there are some other mistakes. Uh, like uh, when users forget like a uh, destination pack or instead of you know, like Ethereum I send like USDT or vice versa but uh, yeah I, I, I will not go on the cover them right now so uh, yeah I have told you about some sad challenges there are actually many more challenges that you will face uh, I can take, I can talk about the hosting I can talk about the hedging the automation etc etc so, but uh, without a solution, right, you don't have to worry about this. We got you covered. And now speaking about, the, we have just spoken about the technological aspect. Now we can talk about the economic side of the things. 
So when we talk about crypto uh, transactions, right, it's it's uh, it's way more cost effective than when we talk about like card processing or banks. It's an instant settlement. There is no chargebacks. There is lower commissions uh, and etc. etc. Et so with us, for example, uh, you have the we have the following structure. So when we talk about the merchant solution, when we talk about the conversion into fiat or into stable coins, the fees are the following. We have for coins we charge only for the deposits, and for coins we have 0.4 percent fee, uh, and for stable coins we have uh, 0.75 percent fees. So it's very low commissions, and uh, the more you process, the more volume you have, the less of the commissions are applied. We don't charge you nothing like for the withdrawal. You only pay the gas fees. That's it. Yeah. So guys, I want to say that uh, here we are presented like uh, well, B2B and Pay is actually uh, registered in Estonia and it's a part of B2B broker group of companies. Uh, we are liquidity and technology provider. And uh, yeah, I encourage you to visit our booth here to ask some questions. We'll be delighted to answer and show our products, our wide range of products. So from my side. Thank you very much. I said pleasure to be here, so thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Bye.